Hi guys, uh, welcome back to Nairobi Legal Insights. In our video today, I want us to discuss about the 12 methods of money laundering. Now, basically I'm going to be telling you the ways that you can be able to actually clean dirty money. And my aim is not to teach you how to launder money, but to actually expose the gaps that we have that are being exploited for people to clean dirty money. Now, in Kenya, we have the Proceeds of Crime and Anti-Money Laundering Act. This is the regulation uh, that deals with money laundering. But in my earlier videos, I stated that this particular act has some uh, loopholes that can be exploited by people who actually launder money. Now, laundered money could come from uh, drug uh, people who sell drugs, uh, money from corruption, money from piracy, and once a criminal has a lot of uh, stolen money or money from these activities, the next step is how do you actually clean this money so that it enters the legitimate economy and it appears as legitimate money. So in this particular video, let us explore the 12 methods of money laundering. It is indeed such a hard task uh, for someone to clean money that they have gotten through corruption. Remember that uh, such kind of money is in cash uh, because once you have cash, then no one can track where the money came from and so you reduce the risk of being caught. So ideally, by explaining to you the different methods uh, that actually people use to clean up their illegally um, or rather ill-gotten money, I'm going to be uh, looking at these methods so that I expose the loopholes we have in our Proceeds of Crime and Anti-Money Laundering Act. And this can guide us to see how these gaps can be closed and we reduce this problem of money laundering because eventually it affects the entire financial system of a country. Now, I've listed the 12 methods for actually cleaning dirty money and making it look legitimate in the economy Using an example here, assuming James um, gets money through corruption and James is blessed through theft to have two billion in his apartment and James would like to have this money cleaned up so that it appears as legitimate income uh, that James earned through hard work and his wealth has been gained through sweating and waking up each and every single day to work hard then James could opt to buy gold as one of the methods for cleaning up dirty money. James uh, could buy raw diamonds, buy expensive art, or James could approach a consulting firm and come into an arrangement to clean up this dirty money. Now, as far as consulting companies are concerned, what happens is that James could pay um, extravagant consulting fees if James is operating through maybe a limited liability company, and we're going to be explaining each of these methods in detail so that we know how they can be exploited to clean up dirty money. The reason for me, and I emphasize, uh, the reason for me to explain these methods that can be used to clean up dirty money is that by knowing these methods, then we can be able to know the loopholes we have in our Proceeds of Crime and Anti-Money Laundering Act uh, so that uh, we know how we can close up such gaps to capture all these methods and thereby reducing the problem of money laundering within the Kenyan uh, economy. Now, the other method of laundering money is mergers and acquisition uh, and acquisitions. Here also, this particular process could be used to clean up dirty money. And I want to focus on the real estate sector and money laundering for purposes of this particular video. And as I make more content on this topic, then we are going to discuss all these other methods and how they are used uh, so that we understand them much better. Now, as far as the real estate sector is concerned, this particular sector is lucrative for people who want to, to loan the money because it involves a lot of cash payment. And we know cash payment leaves no track. You can't track cash and how it exchanged hands. While when we come to the banking sector, then someone can actually detect that you, you for sure received a 20 million into your account. Now, assuming uh, Rogers has 2 billion stolen money in his house and Rogers would want to 
go through the real estate sector to clean up this money. One alternative is that Rogers could start buying houses across Nairobi. If there is a house in Runda worth 100 million, what then Rogers could do is purchase that house. But when it comes to payment, uh, Rogers will pay 70% towards the purchase price of that house uh, through the banking system. That's a legitimate banking system. And then the other 30% Rogers is going to pay in cash. And this cash is part of uh, the stolen money Rogers had in his house in cash. Now, there's an advantage of paying that 30% and there are chances of the seller agreeing to such a transaction because while the 70% purchase price towards that house is going to be taxed, the amount of money Rogers is going to pay in cash is not subject, subject to, uh, to, to taxation. So even the seller is going to accept that more easily while Rogers is also going to be happy that the seller has accepted because in the process he has been able to actually reduce a portion of the stolen money which is in cash uh, kept in his house. So the real estate sector is very key uh, to money laundering and we also have a situation whereby uh, Rogers could opt to buy a house worth 50 million and spend 20 million renovating it. And we know that as far as renovations are concerned and minor constructions, um, there's a lot of cash payment involved. So Rogers is going to be using the cash to renovate this house. Now, along the way, by the time the renovation is done, Rogers has spent 20 million cash that was stuck in his house to renovate a house. The value of the house has increased and Rogers can resell that money. Rather, Rogers can resell that house at a higher price. And that way, he has been able to actually convert some of his illicit or ill-gotten money into legitimate income through renovation of a property. So this particular topic is of much interest to me because I've spent a lot of uh, nights and days reading about the real estate sector and money laundering. I've reviewed different laws and how different countries are trying to actually regulate the real estate uh, sector as far as money laundering is concerned. Now, comparing the real estate sector to the banking uh, sector, the banking sector or the financial sector is so much regulated compared to the real estate sector where most people who are trying to clean money are running to because there is minimum chances of being caught. So this particular topic, uh, um, I'm going to be reviewing it further and I'm going to be doing more content uh, so that uh, we learn along the way. As I do my research, I'm going to also share what different countries have done to curb this issue of money laundering through the real estate sector. Now, as I stated earlier, there is a lot of regulation put on banks. So people who are cleaning money will look for the other alternatives where they're not going to be caught easily. In fact, we know that in Kenya, as far as uh, the proceeds of crime and anti-money laundering act of kenya is concerned once you deposit more than a million bob there has to be a notification uh, raised a red flag uh, as far as that particular transaction is concerned and the essence of this is to ensure that those who launder money do not take advantage of the financial sector because after stealing money the hardest part is how do you legitimize that money how do you put into how do you actually put that money into the economy to appear that you actually worked for it. This is going to become clearer. I'm going to be um, showing the nexus uh, between money laundering and the real estate sector. We have a lot of projects that have come up across Nairobi. We have a, a lot of um, apartment blocks that have been built. Have you ever asked yourself where, where this money comes from? Not to say that all money that is used to develop property in Kenya is uh, through laundered money, but there's a substantial portion of that money that indeed comes uh, from money laundering. And I'm still doing research on that uh, because we have situations whereby someone has set up a different apartments, put up expensive, um, expensive units that cannot actually be paid for by the local people within the Kenyan market. This already shows you that uh, money laundering has an impact on the economy of a country because those who earn money legitimately begin to suffer because, as you can see, they cannot afford to pay for housing that has been um, 
financed through laundered money because the money lo launderer does not care about uh, the implication the implications uh, such an activity is going to have on the common person so they're going to raise um, the prices of rent in an area because they invest they build so many houses they set the prices and they distort the market so this is a very key area of interest to me and i'm going to be explaining all my findings uh, so that we know how we can close the gaps within the proceeds of crime and anti-money laundering act of kenya um, as far as money laundering is concerned thank you so much for watching this particular video i'm going to be creating more content on money laundering in the real estate sector and remember this is my area of specialization and so the knowledge i acquire from um, some of my brilliant friends who are also experts in anti-money laundering my professors is the knowledge i'm going to also share with you uh, because through learning from each other is when we get better at what we intend to do i'm also spending a lot of my time reviewing different uh, jurisdictions and as far as money laundering in the real estate sector is concerned so I've, um, I'm looking at a lot of research work in the US, in Canada. I'm looking at the real estate sector in Miami, uh, in uh, New York, and how these sectors have been actually influenced by money laundering. Basically, how do we come up with a robust regulatory framework that can tackle the loopholes in the real estate sector and money laundering? Now. Thank you so much for watching again. Remember to subscribe so that you receive notifications every single time I post a new video. And for active engagement, uh, you can follow our Twitter page at Nairobi Legal. Um, and then in case you have a personal question, feel free to drop me an email. I'm always happy to engage in uh, sharing and knowledge. My email is provided on your screens. And see you next time.